friends, welcome back. It's Miss A here and it is Thursday, art day, best day of the week. I hope you guys are having a fabulous week and that you had a wonderful spring break. I hope you got to rest, maybe sleep in a little bit, spend some time with your family, maybe you traveled. Um, I hope that it was great and wonderful. Um, I know I did a lot of resting over spring break, a lot of arts and crafts and a lot of watching Netflix, which was really nice. Um, but I hope you guys are really enjoying this lesson. Um, we learned about Mr. Claude Monet and his beautiful uh, water gardens and his, um, his water gardens, his beautiful garden with the water lilies um, and the bridge. So we are going to continue with our crayon resist and doing some fun techniques with our watercolor um, and also just kind of revisiting how we really use our watercolor. Um, but I am really excited to see how these turn out. I've enjoyed teaching this lesson. My friends in class have really enjoyed this lesson. Um, so I can't wait to see them. I hope you have a great week and I can't wait to see your artwork. I'll see you soon, Lions. Bye, here comes your how-to video. Hey guys, welcome back to your how-to video this week. Um, we are going to be continuing our Monet Gardens and um, last week we used the crayon. Um, so we created a picture kind of looking like this. Um, this year we're gonna add, this year, oh my goodness, did I say last year? I meant to say last week. Uh, so last week we did this, my brain today, my friends. Um, last week we created the um, plants, the variety of plants and the different textures. And we created our lily pads um, and our bridge. And this week we are going to add the watercolor. Now, if you do not have watercolor, no worries. Um, you can use marker. We've done this before. Marker, a paintbrush. If you don't have a paintbrush, you can use a Q-tip um, or any kind of soft material to paint with. Um, you're gonna have some water. I have a little dropper in here so that I can just add water. If you don't have that, that's fine. Just pour your water. And I'm using lids this time um, to put my marker on and then add the water. Some people um, before have used plastic bags, which I've shown you in videos, or foil. Um, you could use wax paper, um, but the lids work too. Just a, a really smooth surface is what you need. Um, and this is what we're gonna start with today. We're gonna end up with a finished product with some green in the background up here and a really pretty blue um, pond. So I'm gonna show you how we do this. Um, we're going to get going here. Let's see. I'm going to take a seat so that I can show you how to do this. All right. I'm going to start with one lid, um, and I think I'm going to start with the green first. I already have a little bit of green in here, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my green marker. Um, I also have a teal marker. If you don't have that, that's perfectly fine. Um, it's like a tealish turquoise. Um, you can just add a little bit of blue and green together to create it as well. Um, so I might use a little bit of all three. On this lid here, I'm going to just add some color. I'm just gonna color on top of it, okay? Add a little bit of that turquoise. Okay, I think I'm gonna skip the blue for now. I think I'm just gonna keep the, the turquoise and the green, okay? And I'm just kind of coloring on top of it. There's no specific way, just adding some color. And then I'm gonna take my dropper with some water and drop some water on top of it to create my watercolor. I've got my brush. I'm gonna swirl that around to create the color that I want. And it creates a really pretty green color. Um, now I'm seeing that it's maybe a little too teal for me, so I'm gonna add a little bit more green up here. Let's see what that does. All right. Now, my brush was thirsty before. It was a dry brush, didn't have anything in it. Um, and you can see now that my brush is thirsty again. I squeezed out all the water. We want to make sure that um, we dip our brush in some water before we get started so that it is completely full. And then we are going to kind of mix it in with this watercolor here. And what I'm going to do is set this aside and I'm going to start painting now. I'm only gonna paint from the bridge up, okay? Um, so I'm gonna start in the bridge. Now, remember we used crayon, um, and with crayon, it has wax. So the wax resists, which means that the water resists the wax. So the crayon's gonna still show through. You don't have to worry about painting over it and it like smudging or getting messed up. 
Um, so I'm painting over and you can see here that I'm starting to get some puddles and I want to get those puddles out. So what I do is I squeeze some of the water out of my brush um, to make my brush thirsty again, which means that it has no water in it. And I'm going to soak up some of those puddles. Now we'll talk about puddles in the pond area because we want to create a cool effect, but with the top, we don't necessarily want puddles. I'm going to continue painting up here. I'm going to grab some more paint and I'm going to gently paint. Now remember with a paintbrush, we don't want to paint back and forth super fast because it could create a hole in our paper. Um, and we don't want to slam our paintbrush into the paper because it'll create the, the bristles to go like everywhere and we don't want um, Mr. Paintbrush, if you can remember, that's what we call this paintbrush. Um, we don't want the bristles to kind of look like he has crazy hair. We wanna take care of our supplies. Um, so I'm gonna keep pushing this watercolor over and I've got some puddles still um, that I wanna get rid of. Now you may wanna do two layers of this. I will do two layers of paint. Um, I'm gonna start with this first layer, it's kind of light. Um, and let me see, can we see it in the camera? Yeah, you can kind of see it, it's kind of light. The lighting in here causes the color to kind of wash out, but I'm gonna keep pushing this color around. Dip my brush in some more water, okay. All right, so I'm gonna to try to move this color around as much as I can without leaving too many puddles. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this lid aside um, and then I will come back and do a second layer of the top here in a minute. Um, so let me move that. I'm gonna rinse out my brush a little bit. And I'm gonna um, pull it out of the water. Okay, squeeze out some extra water and put it aside for a second. All right, I'm gonna do my second lid here. Um, and this time we're going to be talking about the pond and I kind of wanted to add some different colors. So the first color I'm going to go in with is obviously a blue. Okay. So I'm going to color on the top of this with some blue, um, and add that marker on there. And I'm going to come in with a little bit of purple, just a smidge and some of this teal. Okay. I'm gonna add some water. Okay, take my brush, dip it in a little bit of water to get it wet. Okay, and I'm gonna swirl this color around a little bit. Um, the purple kind of just made this blue a little bit darker um, and a little bit more, let's see, let's add a little bit more. Don't know if that'll change too much, but Oh yeah, just a little bit. All right, so I've got my blue. Uh, let me make sure we're still in the frame here because I moved this around a little bit. All right, um, I'm going to start painting this part of the pond. And again, I'm gonna move my color around as best as I can um, without leaving the puddles. We're gonna talk about adding in some puddles here in just a little bit um, because we wanna create this cool like water effect. Um, but what I'm going to do is make sure this water gets into this part of my drawing. Um, I know that, you know, it is green and it is part of um, the greenery, but, you know, it's kind of hovering over the water. And when you have plants over the water, most of the time you can still see through it or they're even sitting in the water. So I'm going to try to go as best as I can and get this stuff colored in. Um, and hopefully you can see the blue on the screen. Let me add a little bit more. Okay, let me pull these puddles down. Big old puddles of water. I still got lots of color to use. You can notice I only dipped my brush like maybe once or twice into the color. Because I have so much color in my brush, I can move everything around like I said. Okay. All right, so I've got that part done. Um, I'm gonna leave this blue, okay? Um, this is like our base color. I'm gonna leave this blue to dry just a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna grab a tissue, just so that I can clean out my lid right here. Um, 
I don't necessarily want to rinse it out in the sink or anything. I'm just going to, you can grab a paper towel if you have one um, from the kitchen. And I'm just going to clean up this color. Um, because I am going to come in with some more purple. And this is up to you. Um, if you want to just use blue, you can. I'm going to use some purple and then some blue. I'm going to make a deeper, a deeper blue. It's like a purpley blue to add on top. Okay, I'm just gonna add some more blue here. And I'm gonna also, once we get some of these colors done, I'm going to add in some, like a teal color. Um, so I'm gonna drop some water in here. And remember, if you are needing to pause, please pause at any time so that you can catch up. Um, I try to go a little bit quicker so the videos aren't, you know, 30 minutes long. Um, I'm gonna dip my brush in some water and let's swirl this color around. And it turns into a deep, deep blue. Now what I'm going to do, um, now that this is still wet, um, I didn't let it dry too much, but I just let some of the color seep in. I'm going to come in and create some little puddles on my paper, um, just in the areas of the pond, okay? And when they dry, they end up looking really cool. So I'm going to just do puddles. And again, it's okay if it's on top of the lily pads. The lily pads are crayon. So they will just, the water's gonna just roll on off. Okay. So I'm gonna do some puddles here um, and kind of just take my brush and kind of dab on top of these puddles. Um, and the cool effect that it makes when it starts to dry is it does look like water. Um, you can see the one that I had finished and it does kind of look like water here. Um, now my color was a little bit thinner. There wasn't as much color in these, but they ended up looking really neat. And it gives it a good variety and a different, it looks like a water, so it has a cool texture to it. All right, um, so I did a few of these and I'm gonna let it dry. And I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, but where I let it seep in just a little bit, you can see more of that purpley color um, and then the blue. So like I said, where it's going to settle. And you're gonna wanna do this a few times, my friends, um, to where you're gonna kind of move the color around just by adding, you know, just by dabbing your brush in it. Okay, because if not, then it settles in these little like creases um, and then it creates lines. So I'm gonna stop there. Um, I'm going to come in and I'm going to clean out my thing again here. But this time I'm not gonna clean it all out, just like a part of it. I'm gonna leave some of that color. And then I'm gonna come in and add some teal. If you don't have teal, again, you can use green and blue. Um, a lot of green and just a little bit of blue will create that teal color. Let's add in some water back into this container of color. I may need to go back in and add some blue, but we'll see. Uh, I think we're good. It made a really pretty aqua color. All right. Um, so you can see it's kind of, uh, oh, you can see it in the, in the, I can't even think of the word I'm trying to say. You can see it in the picture. All right, I'm gonna come in and add some of this teal color in. Um, again, just taking my brush and kind of dabbing it on. Um, just in spots that, you know, I can see. Now I'm not brushing. I'm not brushing this color. I'm simply dabbing this color on um, to create some of these really cool spots. Um, and like I said, when it dries, it's gonna have these little like rings of color that kind of look like, um, like water. All right. And then I'm gonna show you another cool little thing here in just a second. Um, all right, so I've added some of this teal in and it's gonna kind of mix with some of the other colors. Um, I'm gonna add some over here too into the kind of grassy green area. Now this one doesn't wanna stick. You can see that I can grab a whole thing of water and put it on top of here. And because I have so much crayon right here, the water just beads um, and it just becomes a little you know, puddle of water. Um, over here, not so much because there's more paper showing, so it's able to soak in that watercolor. Um, and so what I'm going to do over here is just kind of pick up some of that color. So I'm going to squeeze out my brush um, and use my thirsty brush 
to pick up some of that water. Um, always having a tissue nearby when you're watercoloring is great. I use tissues or like paper towels from the kitchen. Um, I feel like they work best because they're super absorbent and you can see that no water is coming out of this um, and it has all the color in it. Um, all right, so um, now that this is kind of drying, um, one technique that I do use is I use the tissue to kind of blot up some of the color, not all of it. I leave some of the puddles, um, but I leave some, you know, some petals so that when it dries, it has that same effect. You can already see down here, um, if you can see it, I'm not sure um, in the video, but it is starting to dry and you can see those kind of rings of color, um, but they're gonna end up looking really neat. So it's up to you if you would want to, um, you know, add some more little specks. You can wait till it dries a little bit if you want um, and add some more. So I'm going to let this dry. I will be right back, my friends, um, to kind of do one more layer with you so that you can kind of see how the cool, like, effect of the water and the drips and the puddles, um, how they create a water type texture on our paper. Um, so I will be right back, lines. Hey guys, and we're back. So I let this dry um, and I can see that uh, down here, you can kind of see all the little speckles of water. Up here, I think I added too much water. So it just blended like normal watercolor. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over my second layer, um, like I had said, and uh, let me grab my chair really fast, and um, add some more dots down here with some of the color that I have left, this aqua color. I'm just going to add a few dots of color, nothing crazy, just a few, just to give it more of that um, water vibe that I have down here. Um, you can see the outlines of some of the water drops in those puddles. Um, and then what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to do a second layer over my green up top. So I'm gonna move my blue lid away. Um, my green lid, I need to add some more water um, just because I let it sit out and it's a little dry. So I'm gonna add in some water here. Um, I might even add in just a little bit, oops, a little bit more color. Um, and again, I know I mixed some colors, but that's okay. I'm just gonna add some more green in here um, and go from there. All right, so I've got some color. Let me make sure we're still in the frame here. All right, so I'm just gonna do a second layer over my green just to darken it a little bit. And again, I'm going to kind of take those puddles of water that I have and just move them up. Um, I've got some puddles here, move them around. That way I can spread some of that color around that I have. Okay. Okay. And then let me get some more here. Okay. This time I'm going to go up so I can get some of this color spread around and that's the good thing about uh like wax resist or like crayon resists is that it gives you a chance to kind of see where watercolor puddles and you know it happens quite often when we use watercolor even if we're using homemade watercolors um, that it starts to puddle and when it puddles it doesn't always make the best shapes if that's what you want. Like down here we wanted those shapes, um, but up here we want more of a smooth color. Um, so we don't want too many puddles or too many harsh outlines. Um, see, I'm running out of watercolor here, but I've got just enough to finish up up here. Um, all right, move some of that around. And that's why like in class, like I've really stressed this year that, you know, you don't need to keep dipping your brush into the watercolor, like the little cakes that we have in our pans of watercolor, because a little bit of watercolor goes a long way. Um, as you can see here, I just used that little bit that I had made and I, I covered this whole section. So these are already starting to dry a little bit. That was quick. Um, so, I mean, I can go back in even and grab a few more, a little bit more of color um, and just dab in some color here. All right, my friends. Um, so this is pretty much your finished product here. Um, we have our wonderful green background, nice and smooth, and our water pond here. And we use some different techniques um, to create those outlines to create that water-like look. 
Um, but I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I will see you guys soon. I hope that um, you can get this all nice and dry, snap a picture, and upload to Schoology. I will see you soon, guys. Have a great week. Bye.